What's up everybody and welcome to iRacing. This is going to be a new series I'm going to be bringing to this channel. Uh, I wanted to start off with the first video explaining a little bit about iRacing and how it all works. This is your main screen once you uh, actually uh, set up an account and, uh, and get the thing going on here. Um, basically you've got your official races, your hosted races, your leagues, teams, uh, where you can buy cars and tracks and stuff, um, uh, your account stuff, uh, um, results and stats from different things, uh, help form settings and all that stuff. So up here is the series you want to run. I mean, it's all self-explanatory. The series you want to run, the track that that series is running at the time in your car. Uh, some series, uh, for example, the iRacing Production Car Challenge, uh, there's actually more than one type of car that runs that series at the same time, so it's kind of like a touring division where you might have uh, prototypes uh, and, a, and touring cars racing. Uh, in that situation, you would pick which kind of car you would want. Matter of fact, I can actually show you here. Uh, if we click on the uh, production car challenge, we'll go to that screen. You can probably hear my TV in the background. I apologize for that. I'm going to turn that down real quick. Um, so here's the production car challenge. Uh, this M stands for multi-class. It means you can race uh, more than one car. Uh, you got the Pontiac Solstice as well as a global Mazda MX-5. Uh, and then you change that, and, and it's going to reload the page and put you on the uh, Mazda. But what I, what I wanted to show you is how all this works here. So you have your official race guide. If you click on that, it'll go to the official races. And these are all championship-based races, which I will also show you a, a kind of an example of that here in a minute. Um, this is the number of pe players that have, signed, have entered the race. Uh, that's where you can click on it to go ahead and get yourself set up to, to go in there. Uh, Delara is like an IndyCar type. So this race starts at 2 o'clock. It's going to be an IndyCar race at Charlotte. Uh, and you can click on that and it'll tell you how many laps it's going to be and everything else. And all these are all the different divisions this game has, okay? Everybody you race against on this game is going to be a, an actual person. There, there are no computer players at all. The only computer opponent you'll race against is yourself if you want to do like a ghost lap or something. So lots of things to do. You have different classes, as you see right here, Rookie, D, C, B, A, Professional, and I can't remember what that last one is. I guess that... Maybe it's pro and then professional, perhaps. I'm not sure. So up here you'll see uh, you have a safety rating and an I rating. Uh, basically, what an I rating is, is the better you do in a race, you, as far as your finish, finishing position goes, your I rating is going to improve. Okay, you can see mine right here. This is for road. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't ever really a great racer. I'm getting better at it. And you can see where my I rating went down, leveled off, went way down here. I'm not even sure why it got down that far, but then it's slowly creeping back up. And then the oval rating. And the oval rating has been kind of uh, steadily climbing here. So, you're, so in your I rating, um, say you have 10 people that enter into a race, okay? It's going to put all 10 people in that one race. Most of the time it won't split them up, but if you have 30 people enter one race, it may split that race up into two groups or three groups, depending on how many people uh, are the maximum that can race in that particular race. And when it splits them up, it'll split them up by I rating. So you'll have the top 10 highest I ratings in one, the middle 10 in the other one, the bottom 10 in the other one. And it keeps kind of, keeps like the fields competitive and close together. Uh, your safety rating, this down here, yeah, this right here, this where it says 2.77, that's oval, 3.57, that's road. This is your safety rating. Every time you touch another car if it's hard enough contact it'll bring up a 4x okay that's four times safe drain you can have a maximum of 17 in a race before it kicks you out of that race disqualifies you for being unsafe um, i know that to a lot of people that's going to sound kind of stupid but trust me that's the way they weed out people who intentionally wreck and turn around backwards stuff like that it works great it's hard to get kicked out i mean you have to really suck bad to get kicked out so don't even worry about that um so you get uh, a 4x for contact with another car it has to be pretty hard contact it, you can bump other cars and it's not going to give you any kind of penalty for that um you can you can wreck other cars and it won't give you a penalty but you know if you do wreck somebody more chances are they're going to remember who you are and you're going to get it back eventually so you don't want to do that uh if you spin sideways i think you get a one or a two x um penalty if you hit the wall you get a two and if you go off course, say if you're road racing or you're at Charlotte Motor Speedway and you run off into the grass, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get you know a one off of that. So, so that's how this works. Let me go to this championship, and I'm gonna show you this because I am a little bit proud of it, and I guess technically I'm kind of uh, kind of bragging on myself just a little bit here. 
this is the uh, how the championships work. It's a little bit confusing, um, but it doesn't take long to get used to it. So you, the way your championships work is you have uh, you have 12 weeks per championship per class on most classes, not all of them. Some classes like the NASCAR Cup Series will run, I think, through the entire year. But you have races every hour or two hours or three hours or however long. They're all kind of different. Um, this particular class here, this Rookie Street Stock Series, it's fixed setups. You don't have to set up your car. Uh, as you can see, I'm leading that championship, so I'm pretty excited about that, leading it by only only two points so you know very very close championship race um i'm leading this out of 6,762 people so i'm pretty proud of myself and like i said i am bragging just a little bit because this is the first time i've ever led the championship here so this particular series has a race every hour on the top of the hour um usually you'll have anywhere from 12 to 18 cars per race uh, and it splits those up depending on how many people enter and based on the i rating uh, like i mentioned before um so you Basically, uh, every for seven days, you'll run one particular track. This week, it's USA International Speedway. You can run as many races at that track as you want. Um, in four races you run at that track, it's going to take your top points position, top points paying position. You're going to keep those points. So if you finish first in that race and get 105 points, and then the other three races you finish second, third, and sixth, and you get less than 105 points, it's going to scrap those points, and you're not going to get them. The minute you enter into a fifth race, it's going to take your two top scoring positions and average those out, okay? So you can actually run, it's actually better if you're running for a championship to either run four, end it with that top race out of those four, and if you have to run a fifth, you might as well just go ahead and run eight because it's going to average those two top finishes regardless, no matter how you look at it. Same thing, you know, and if you run nine, it's going to take the top three and so on and so forth. So uh, it's always better to run a multiple of four races. And, and, uh, and average that top finish out the best you can. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, so you have a 12-week a uh, championship season. It takes your top eight weeks and accumulates all those points. Okay, we we're actually in the 10th week, 10th or 11th week right now, I think. So what it does is it will let you run three more weeks after those eight. And uh, if, you, if you score better than one week, it will drop your lowest weeks. So if I have one week where I only score 50 points, and that was like the second week of the season, but then on the ninth week of the season I score 60 points, it's going to drop that 50 point week and, and give me an extra 10 points towards the ninth season or the ninth uh, the ninth week, if you know what I mean. So that's how that works. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and jump into a practice session here and kind of show you how that works. So once you get to this screen right here, uh, this you have entered this practice session. You're going to draw a forfeit from here. You can't do much. You can't enter any other series until you withdraw from the series or finish the series you're in. This is a driver briefing, which is just this right here. It tells you a little bit about the track, the practice session, uh, conditions of the track, uh, event weather, which is pretty much default all the time. I think it changes a little bit sometimes, but not very often. And then join session. So you want to click join session. That's going to load up the uh, actual track and let you race or practice. Now, if you see this screen right here, you don't want to mess with this screen. What this will do is after, the, uh, after a race or practice session, uh, once it's done, you hit continue, and it'll bring up the stats before you finish, what your fastest lap time was, um, the points you got, all that stuff. So if you see this screen, just leave it alone. Don't touch it until after you've finished racing or practiced or whatever, or else you're not going to be able to see those stats. And I run in a window mode. I know that might aggravate some people, but my computer doesn't, doesn't like running uh, full screen for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, so here we are at the track. Um, this is basically your, your main screen once you get to the racetrack here. It's going to tell you up here how long practice lasts, how, lo how much time that has elapsed. I mean, it's all you know, self-explanatory. Uh, track length, turns, all that stuff. you got your entries here. This is how many people has entered in. Uh, the laps you've ran. Results. You know what? I guess these are people who have joined this practice session and have already backed out, and this is the times they've put down. And the track info. As you can see, the track, your, your car info, your weather info, it's 78 degrees, tracked 109 degrees, winds at 2 mile per hour, relative humidity 55 degrees, 30 inches of uh, HD rising. I don't know what the heck that is. Um, so, and all that. Uh, you know, the tracks now are dynamic, so the more you race them, the more rubber gets laid down. It changes the way your car handles. They actually throw marbles up that you can get up into and get loose really easy. This particular setup is a fixed setup, so you can't really change much on it. But, uh, in some classes, you can set up all this different stuff, and it changes the way your car handles. 
you can change your steering ratio and your steering offset. It doesn't do any good much. Steering ratio I've changed sometimes to get a better lap time, but the majority of the time it's set pretty much where you want it. Uh, let's see, here's your options. You've got all your options for keyboard, your steering wheel, which you definitely need. Uh, here's all your options for text chat and everything. Graphical options, you pretty much leave that like it is. You don't need to mess with that. Replay options, leave that. Sound options, you wouldn't need to really do anything to this either unless you're doing something like me and recording or, or changing back and forth between headphone and like monitor and your controls. Uh, you don't need to mess with that. I, I kind of look at this only whenever, uh, only whenever I need to figure out how to do something. Uh, so, you know, anyway, that's what that is. So, let's jump into the car. I just realized I have my headset on again, so I had to take that off because it will not, for some reason, when I have my headset on, it won't record the sound coming to the monitor of the actual car and stuff. So, this is your, uh, your in-car view. This is the only view you have while you're racing. You can't look over your car. You can't look from a hood, top of your car, nothing like that. Like I said, it is a simulation. They want it to be as real as possible, and this is what you have. Now, you can set up buttons where you can look left and right. Some people do that. I don't. I can see good enough in the rearview mirror. It don't bother me. So, uh, I got a paddle shifter. Every, as far as I know, every, I don't know if there's any automatics or not. I've drove, I've drove probably five or six different kinds of cars, and they've all been manual, so... You can, you got an auto clutch, but you do have to shift shift gears. So uh, I'll take you through some of this stuff. This is the F1 key. It sets up lap timing. This is going to tell you what your lap, your current lap you're on, the position you're in. Actually, let's run a lap real quick, and I'll, uh, I'll show you. Let's run this lap real quick here. Setups change. Beacon, they've got it set up really nice. And that's, that's the wall. <laughs> so you see it down there, it says I'm on lap one. It's a uh, That's a pretty good time. That's going to be about two hundredths off of uh, the of pole. Car's pushing real bad. It's getting on the wall. So basically, that's what uh, that's what that does. F two is going to bring up your position where you're at amongst everyone else. So all these other people have practiced. As you can see, I've uh, I've practiced second fastest on the first lap. Uh, F three is going to bring up relative, which is not actually working. There it goes. If there's anybody else on track with you, it'll show you how many seconds you are in front of or behind that person. F4 brings up your fuel, where you can adjust your fuel, you can uh, take windshield tear off off, you can check a fast repair, so if you get in a wreck, you can go into the pits, tell it not to change any tires, which you do at F5, and you hit, you basically hit the down arrow and hit space bar to uncheck the tires. Go back to fuel, uncheck begin fueling, and you'll want to check fast repair. If your car's damaged, then it'll repair it within like three seconds. You get one of those usually per race. Uh, tire info which shows you heat and stuff like that, pit stop adjustments, uh, we don't have pit stops, so there's no adjustments because I haven't said anything. Uh, brake bias you can change in race, um, graphics adjustments, I've never messed with any of that. I think you can actually change this kind of position since the car, but I've never messed with it. And then this, I've never messed with that either, I don't, I don't mess with all that, I'm always, last time I tried to mess with it, I, I screwed it all up and had to restart the game. So that's basically how all that works. Um, when you start a race, you're going to get practice time, and uh, once practice time's over, it'll it'll come up and flash and say qualifying is about to start or something like that. You hit the race button, it reloads the track. You qualify for your two laps. It gives you like five minutes. Mm -hmm. You wait till that qualifying's over with, and uh, and after that, you go to the race and then you'll start the race. And then I'll I'll kind of show you all that when I start the first race, and that'll be in uh, another video. So. That's all I can think to show you uh, about the game right now. If you have any questions, uh, I'll try my best to answer them for you. Um, I just kind of wanted to put this video out there and uh, give everybody an idea of kind of what the game is about if you've never seen it before. Um, and kind of answer, answer some questions. Somebody actually just popped in right here, you see. So, actually, I figured there'd be a lot of questions about the game for people that never played it. And I, uh, I just wanted to kind of go do a quick video. I know this is probably going to be longer than I wanted it to be. But do a quick video. Just kind of... 
quickly explaining things and uh, going over different parts of the game. That way, whenever you do see me play it, you won't uh, you won't be extremely uh, confused at what's going on. So, and I'll try to explain more as I think about it. Um, this is the first, basically the first game I'm putting on YouTube. So it's going to be a little touch and go for a little while and, until I get the hang of things. So just bear with me. But um, if you like it, you know, share it with your friends. Let everybody know. Uh, if you don't mind hitting that like button. If you dislike to hit the dislike button. You know, either way, uh, I don't normally like asking for likes on videos. But uh, it does it does help promote the channel. I'm trying to uh, I put in a lot of money um, getting good equipment to... Uh, to record the races and, and the, Na the actual NASCAR on TV races because I know so many people watch them and, and are enjoying them. And this is just kind of my way of um, trying to get some of that back through maybe a little bit of ad revenue or something. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, you know, come back and I'll, uh, I'll try to put out two or three a week if I can. Um, and uh, just check back occasionally and subscribe and they'll be here. All right. So y'all have a good day.